I'm Tyrick Jones, Managing Editor. I'm Chris Post, Contributing Writer. I'm Astor Lufkin. I'm also a Contributing Writer. And this is your Daily Star Trek News Roundup for the week of February 25, 2024. I want to start on a downer and then move up from there today. So um, so this week we lost Kenneth Mitchell. He was 49 years old. Uh, Kenneth played a number of roles in Star Trek Discovery. He was in the first season as Cole, and he was also Cole Shaw, Cole's father, in, uh, I think, season two. He played Tanavik, who was the time traveler uh, Klingon monk. Uh, and he played Aurelia, Aurelio, sorry, um, uh, who is, um, who is, I think, a human um, later in the series. Uh, and then he he's voiced a number of roles in Star Trek Lower Decks. Uh, in 2018, after he was already filming um, Star Trek Discovery, he was uh, diagnosed with ALS, um, which can be a very fast-moving disease, but he was a fighter. Um and continued getting roles, and the role of Aurelio actually was um, was scripted to be in a wheelchair to um, to sort of go along with. He was in a wheelchair by that point. Uh, he continued to show up at conventions as long as he could. Um, you know, he was he was really a fighter, um, and that was a tough loss, I think, this week. Uh, so, what were what were your reactions when you heard that that he had passed? It's it's. I was really sad. He, he was like the first, he, the one of the first articles I ever wrote for Daily Star Trek News was about him and his was for Disability Pride Month. But I talked a lot about him, and I watched like a bunch of interviews with him. So I had sort of, I had been like following his life and his journey, like for a bit now. Um, and I just remember there's this really beautiful story of him. Uh, going to his co-star who played Laurel. I think her name's Mary, and I forget her last Kifo. name, but she played Mary Kifo. Yeah, Mary Kifo. And there's like she tells the story, and he tells the story of how like uh, he confided in her um, about his diagnosis, and like they went to the Discovery cast, like cast and crew, and like told everyone. And it's like this really beautiful story of everyone rallying around him and like being there to support him. And like I think. Stories like that are really what embody Star Trek. Almost, it's the sense of community and the sense of love. And I, th- I thought it was so beautiful, and it was like amazing to read. And it's devastating that he's passed away. But it's been sort of heartwarming, I guess, to see how the entire community has rallied around him. I'm seeing everyone post about him. There are fundraisers. There are like people telling all their stories about how amazing beautiful person he was even people was like yeah i met him for five minutes at a convention and he was so kind and so nice or people who worked with him and are like he always lit lit up my life and i'm so happy to have gotten to know him and i i think it's really beautiful to just see all of these stories yeah Yeah. chris yeah yeah uh you know er everything that astor just said is is obviously i agree with and you know i i'm going back and i'm doing my watch through now of discovery and so i'm i'm right at the end of season one and i mean his performance is is you know is is really good in a difficult situation because the 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 makeup effects for klingons in discovery season one it's really heavy. It's really hard to act through. Uh, and I mean, it's like working with a bag over your head almost. Uh, it's just the, the, the prosthetics are so thick. Um, but he uh, really did, did, a, did a fantastic job in season one. And I'm looking forward now to, uh, to seeing his work in the, in the coming seasons uh, as, as I get to those uh, in the next uh, a couple of weeks. But yeah, it's tragic. Uh, you know, he had he had kids. Um, you know, he's my age, uh, so it's it it kind of it brings into focus how short and and fragile our existence on this planet is. Yeah, yeah. That that was my reaction too. Was he's forty nine, which is how old I am. So um, you know, it's it's too too soon to lose somebody like that, but. Uh... Um, but it happened and he was as I say he was a fighter even when he lost the ability to speak I know he did a couple of interviews through like a computer translation um 
you know, and he just he just never gave up until until the last. So it's you know, um, I think our thoughts thoughts go out to his family and his friends, and um, he was a bright light that will I think will be missed. Absolutely. Um, the uh, the other we we lost two people this week. The other was uh, Charles Deer Cop Deer Cop. I think I'm saying that right. He was 87 years old. Um, and he played the character Mar Marlo, Marla, Mar Morla, Morla. Sorry, um, I'm very tired this week. Um, uh, he, he played Morla in the episode Wolf in the Fold um, of the original yeah. series. Um, that, oddly, when I was a kid, was one of my favorite episodes of the Me series. Too. Um, I I've always been like a Victorian era. Sherlock Holmes kind of fan, and I always was fascinated by Jack the Ripper, uh, and that's the Jack the Ripper episode. Morla um, was one of the several red herrings they put in the show to so you mm -hmm. didn't know who the killer was. Um, Scotty was the was the one who was who was meant to be the killer, but not really. He was framed. Um, but they had all these other, and obviously the audience knew it wasn't going to be Scotty, but, but, so they had all these other sort of red herrings. Um, and the, I can't remember his name, but the one who actually wound up doing it is the guy who voiced Piglet in the Winnie the Pooh cartoons. Um, yeah. so, which is a very strange Star Trek fact that I love to pull out from time to time. But, um, yeah, it's, it's funny to me how close his voice actually was. To the piglet voice, there was not a, a lot of, of modulation that that happened there, but but no that that uh, you know the 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 Red Jack episode of of Star Trek, like you said, it is it is kind of a classic. It's one of those um, you know space vampire non corporeal being episodes that they would throw in every so often. But in my mind, one of the best best executed ones of any of the any of the series and and you know there's a lot of those space ghost kind of episodes out there in star trek but that one i thought was was really done very well and um his uh his part is uh uh relatively relatively small but you know he had that uh he had that look that that nose that was kind of instantly recognizable in, yeah. in anything that he did I uh I when I saw his obituary I went back and I looked at some of his other movie roles and um uh, not not a huge actor uh in 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 his time certainly not a leading man but was in a lot of things with a lot of people uh and and so I didn't realize how prolific uh his his career had had been but uh yeah he'd really he really had done a lot uh during his career especially in in the 1970s he was really really active in the 70s yeah he was one of those character actors that i think just showed up in everything you know you there there are those people that you don't necessarily know their name but you definitely know their face from various things yeah yeah one of those guys who when you need somebody who who looks looks tough looks like he's he's seen a few fights yep. uh you know you, you just like go go to him yeah exactly uh, Astor, what uh, do you know? Wolf in the Fold at all? What What are your feelings? Yeah, I know Wolf in the Fold. I do not have such fond memories of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I think it's a fun, I think it's a weird episode. I remember watching it, and being like, "That's weird. That's really weird." And then like moving on. <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the non corporeal being ghost episodes. I find them to be strange, like strange in like a fun campy way. Mm -hmm. That I can enjoy, but I don't know. <laughs> I I didn't like Mark Wolf in the Fold as a big episode when I watched it, and now it's like one of like the iconic uh, TOS episodes. And I'm like, really? What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, may maybe it's um, it's just uh, we just like it because we're closer to being in the Victorian era to having been in the Victorian <laughs> Era than you are. Uh, so we, you know, we almost remember Jack the Ripper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, he played he played the woman's boyfriend or husband. Um, I can't remember which. And um, you know, he and uh, he and her father uh, were the were the main other suspects until it turned out to be the investigator. So. Um, so anyway, he was 87. He passed away peacefully, I think. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's always sad. We're losing the original series 
actors and crew at a pretty fast rate now um because it's been over 55 years so um so it's it's starting we're getting getting a lot of that we had a lot last year and i think we're probably in store for a lot more this year um but so unfortunately i think we're going to be having more of these discussions throughout the year so uh next thing i want to talk about uh let's let's um raise the mood a little bit uh disco came out with a new trailer um uh the final season five trailer um so let's take a look it has been a hell of a journey but everything ends someday the discovery is my home my family we've always been able to find answers together being a part of a crew, being where you need to be, when you need to be, that's Starfleet. Last hands. I shall follow your lead. The greatest treasure in the known galaxy is out there. It's more important than you can imagine. I can't actually talk about the trailer uh, because I've seen the first four episodes um, and I can't talk about those. Um, so... wait, 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 wait. Hold on. You've seen the first four episodes? I have. I got the screeners this week. So, um, so yeah. So... I know. He, and, and he doesn't share with us. He just like hoards the these, these screeners to himself. I, I, um, I'm embargoed. So uh, you can watch for my Sorry. group general review on Monday, March 11 at 7.30, which is when the 7.30 p.m. Eastern, which is when the embargo lifts. Uh, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on the trailer. Folks, <laughs> as, you're, you're the, <laughs> you just dropped this as, bomb on still me. trying to get over the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> just, that was a, a great minute. reaction. I know. <laughs> I know it's it, it 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 is it is it is a it is a cosmic injustice, Aster, and I completely agree with you. And I think Rick should 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 be ostracized for the rest of the week because. He... <laughs> Please, maybe I'll get some sleep. Then. Oh but no, um, I'm looking forward. Uh, you know, I've I've seen the trailer. I I only watched it once, so um, I can't like uh, nitpick it too much. But uh, I'm looking forward to the season. It looks like um, they're just going uh, full throttle, and um, I think um, I think some of the new Trek has been accused maybe of being a little bit slow paced and and uh, maybe uh, too much character oriented. Uh, and so maybe they're going to J.J. Abrams it up a little bit and uh, give us some uh, some action Trek uh, for this season. And so uh, I like both. I like Cerebral Trek and I like Action Trek. So um, so I don't have a problem with it. Maybe some new Trek purists might uh, uh, might not like the direction quite as much. But, uh, um, you know, I, I, like I said, I've, I've watched most of season one again. And there are some 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 actiony episodes in season one. There's some some hand to hand combat episodes with the Klingons that uh, that were actually pretty well choreographed. Uh, and and so so Discovery can do action. And so if that's if that's the way they're going to go, I'm all I'm all for it. Yeah, Ashton? I really liked watching the the trailer because I love Discovery, obviously. But um, there's there's like a I really so I'm really into like scene design and like. Yeah. story design and i thought that some of the sets in the trailer were gorgeous and like that's what i latched on to they go to like a temple for like five seconds in the trailer and i was like this is gorgeous i'm so excited to see it and i think 
we it, it it very much leans away from like the what I think of as like traditional sci-fi like we're gonna make like a stereotypical like alien race and here's what they're gonna look like I think it it almost okay maybe I'm just thinking about Dune but it almost looked Dune like um the new I'm excited for the new Dune <laughs> me too so I, was, yeah, so I was I was really excited about that um and also the I thought the puzzle box well the the, the artifact it looks like a puzzle box that was like the coolest thing ever to me and i know these seem like irrelevant things but it's like what i latch on to when i watch trailers and i oh. i really liked the design of it and i'm curious to see the the like meaning and like what exactly it does because they haven't really said i don't think i think they're just like it's a powerful artifact that will right. change the fate of the galaxy yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the MacGuffin. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's what that's what basically I think it's it is. It's just you know a reason for them to go on this adventure. Um, and go ahead. Well, yeah. Also, I uh, all the actors have like recently been not by all I mean two. I've seen two actors do it. It's about like <laughs> like how how excited how like proud they are of the ending of the show and how they thought it was very heartwarming and how they're excited for everyone to see it. Um, so I'm really excited for that. And yeah. though it was ended early, I, I kind of, I was really nervous about it because the show was like, the ending was rewritten and they sort of like jerry, I, they sort of like gerrymandered like the ending, not gerrymandered, jerry, jerry rigged the end, ending sort of into it. And I was like, oh, that's going to be bad. But ap- according to the actors, it's quite good. So I'm excited for that. <laughs> Part of me feels like, now I haven't seen the ending, so this I can t- talk about. Part of me feels like that's what the actors have to say. Um, but I, I have, <laughs> I mean, that's their job to, to get us to watch. Um, but on the other hand, I, I really hope they stuck the landing and I, it's a thoughtful, really good pe- people who are putting this together. So I, I have high hopes that, um, you know, it's not just a spin and that it actually has sort of it. And I can't. I can't tell you anything about the episodes, but I can say that uh, it's a, it's gorgeous to look at. It is. You're right about the design. It is a beautiful, beautiful season. It, um, you know, it's just it's just gorgeous. Um, and that's all I'm going to tell you right now. I'm so upset about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna steal your job for like this solar. <laughs> like this is, this is my threat. <laughs> um. So yeah. So that's the discovery trailer. Uh, the other thing that came out this week was an announcement by Modifius Entertainment that Star Trek Adventures, which is their tabletop role playing game, is coming out with a second edition. Um, now I have not played the Star Trek Adventures, uh, but I really want to. And I think we've talked about getting a game together among us. Um, and this one, the, the original, uh, Star Trek Adventures, you basically could be in Starfleet. This one, uh, is going to add the functionality so that you can be any alien race. Uh, it's going to basically expand the galaxy for Star Trek Adventures. Uh, so you don't have to, you're not just, um, tied down to being, in in Starfleet or being a you know uh, a you know one of the races that that founded it or whatever, we, you can be pretty much anything you want. Is my understanding? I'm not positive about that. Um, I will have more information because I'm interviewing um, the three of the people that worked on it: um, a, a writer, the designer, and the creator. I think. So, um, so that, that's coming, that interview is coming in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm going to find out a lot more about exactly how it's going to work. Um, but I'm, I'm excited about it. You know, I'm, I always like sort of leafing through these things and, um, and I really want to, uh, want to play it, uh, with all of you. So, uh, Chris, Aster, yeah, anybody else on DSC? I mean that that sounds exciting. I was looking at uh, character generation for the uh, for the for the current edition, the first edition, I, yeah. I, I guess, and um, that's one of the things I noticed is that there were races that I know are they're even Starfleet races, but they they weren't available for for player characters. Um, yeah. There there are quite a few. They had quite a few to choose from, but. Um, uh, one of uh, one of my favorite kind of 
minor races uh from uh from starfleet is the uh the afrosians um the uh uh kurtwood uh, uh uh i just lost his name uh he was the president of the federation in one of the uh original right. series uh, um and he was god he's he's uh he's the dad from that 70s show right uh, what's his name kurtwood smith is that no that's not kurtwood i don't think that's kurtwood. i don't know maybe i could be. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, ter- I'm terrible with names. But anyways, they yeah. have the long hair and the Fu Manchu mustaches. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah, I, was yeah. like, I love that character. Those guys are kind of cool. And there's yeah. there's a bridge officer on the uh, Saratoga, I think, uh, that's a Frosian. And, and so they they, 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 they they pop up in the films uh, and they're all over the place in in expanded universe materials. They're, they're in novels and that kind of stuff. But they're not available in the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, so yeah. So I was looking, I was looking at that. So maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that'll be available to me as an option in in the uh, in the second edition. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Um, and I, that's one of the things I'm going to question them on is is what alien races are available, or like a taste of what's available. Um, so, Aster, how about you? I'm excited. You got me thinking about character creation, and now I've I've been like, okay, like what rate because i play a lot of D, so i'm like trying to like line up like what race would be what in D D. because i don't think that's how people actually build role-playing games but that's how i imagine people build role-playing games <laughs> <laughs> so so that, that's that's where my mind went but i'm excited i'm hoping to, i want to get an advanced reader's copy just so i can like have it like <laughs> i used to like get arcs for i worked at a bookstore for a while and i'd get advanced reader copies and i thought they were the coolest thing ever and i think that'd be cool and i really want to play i love dming or gming i guess it's gming when it's not dungeons and dragons <laughs> game, oh, game master that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah um so i'd i'd love to do that and i really want to play with you guys i think it'd be super yeah. fun. um yeah. michael dorn uh has um uh has come out to talk about his wharf character um, and Chris, you actually wrote this article. So do you want to, do you want to recap it for us? Uh, well, he was talking about, uh, you know, where Worf might go in the future, what, what he might be open to. And really at this point in his career, he's really open to exploring, uh, uh, different avenues of Worf. You know, for a long time, he, he kind of championed this idea of a Captain Worf, uh, uh, show where he would be the captain of a starship. Uh, and in Picard, uh, obviously, Worf's career went a different direction than being captain of a starship. But uh, what I liked uh, in this interview, what really stuck out to me was uh, he talked about the possibility of maybe exploring a father and son sort of show uh, with Alexander. And he admitted, he said, Worf is a bad dad. And so, <laughs> Worst father in Star Trek. Yeah, he, 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 com- he completely owned it. He's like, yeah, Worf, Worf is a bad dad. So there, there's a lot of a lot of stuff to unpack in that relationship that could make for a really interesting show. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, because it's been such a meme forever that Worf is such a bad dad. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, so the fact that that, that Michael Dorn is, is owning it now uh, yeah. is is fantastic, I thought. Yeah, he needs some redemption. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> he really is. and i actually have thought that they should bring alexander on and at some point and and do him in warp i didn't yeah. think a whole series about that but uh maybe it could yeah, be a I, sitcom. I i expected alexander to show up in picard and i was yeah. like here he comes here he yeah. comes and he just never showed up well, <laughs> <was> like, oh. <laughs> so much about that kind of thing you know we had picard's yeah. son and um, you know, it, it, it's 40. funny that they didn't bring him in, but there's, there was, they only had so many television hours to, yeah, well, they brought in Jordy's kids. So it's like, and Oh, I see what's going to happen. Okay. And then it, it didn't happen. Star Trek <laughs> legacy, man. That's, that's where Alexander can come in. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. So Star Trek, the next, next, next. generation. Right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Astra, how do you feel about Alexander as a, uh, as a character and that relationship? With Worf, I actually think Alexander's kind of annoying. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I think, I think it's funny. Like, I think the whole thing is funny, and it kind of makes sense for Worf to be like a bad dad. <laughs> I don't. That doesn't surprise me. Well, it kind of does because one of my favorite episodes is the one where we meet Worf's parents. It's right. It's that episode where Picard goes home 
um, right after yeah. he gets deborgified. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh, that's a technical term. Yep. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Um, and that's like one of my favorite next gen episode ever because I think Worf's parents are like the sweetest people in all of Star Trek. They are adorable yeah. and I love them. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, how did Worf end up being such a bad dad? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he had these amazing parents. Yeah. Um, that was, I don't know if you know this, Aster, because you were probably too young to know, but that was kind of stunt casting. I mean, those were two really famous actors um, mm-hmm. whose names I now can't think of, but. Um, Georgia, Georgia Brown, what's that her name? Um, I don't remember. Anyway, they were very, very well known actors at the time. Uh, and but it didn't feel like stunt casting because they were so genuine and so, so they they were just wonderful. Um, you know, and she came back for one other episode, and I always wished the father had too because, uh, um, because I really liked that dynamic of the two of them in Warp. So. We never got it though. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> you know, Worf as a father, it just it felt like an undercooked idea. Like it, you know, like they were yeah. like, "Hey, let's let's do this for this episode," and everyone was like, "Yeah, that's great." And then they're like, "Well, now what do we do?" You know, because we we've, we've created <laughs> we made this a kid. <laughs> yeah, we made a kid. So so what the hell? You know, and, that's and exactly so, what happened into Worf too. He was like, I yeah. need a kid. What exactly. the hell? Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's just, you know, and then like that they, they, they brought him back in DS9 and he was like, he was annoying then too. I think Aster was right. <laughs> like, yeah. like oh, yeah. little, little Alexander was super annoying. Yeah. Adolescent Alexander was, was not as annoying, but was right. still, still just like, <sighs> A plot device desperately waiting for a plot. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, he, it just... it. I think when you're going to introduce a character like that, you need to have, like, a long-term goal. And I don't think they did. And yeah. and so, you know, with, like, like uh, uh, Data's daughter, they're like, okay, we're going to introduce her, and... And then she's going to die, and that you know will just one and done, and be in and out, and it'll be great. And then with Alexander, they didn't kill him at the end of the episode, so now we're stuck with him just out there. <laughs> you know? yes. Right? Jeez. Exactly. <laughs> well, and I'll I'll tell you, I have some interesting facts to share with you about this. One is that the original actor who played Alexander was very difficult to work with. Um, uh, from what I've heard. Um, and so they recast him with Brian Bonsall, uh, who you may recall as um, he, uh, the little brother on Family Ties when they decided to bring in, uh, bring in another child because everybody was getting too old. Um, so he, he wound up doing that, and he was much better to work with. Um, the, in DS9, there's an episode where we meet adult Alexander, who's a time traveler, and that's probably the best Alexander episode we ever got. It that was that was, as I recall, a pretty good episode. Um, but then you've got episodes like <laughs> the one with Loxana Troy, <laughs> where Stop. where they go into the hall. Like, you know. Then you have some not real good Alexander episodes. <laughs> the higher Loxana. the score, and, yeah. So we put out um, on a. A review of Star Trek Picard, the art and making of the series book this week. Alex wrote it, uh, but this is it. Um, and I have leafed through this thing, and it is just gorgeous. I may not have enough room to show you, but it's got it's got beautiful, beautiful art. Um, uh, like. It, it's probably hard to see for the camera, but it's just, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous hardcover. Um, a lot of great information in it um, about uh, about the making of the series, um, about the Borg. Um, there are great photographs. There's concept art. There's a spread showing Michael Dorn getting his bald cap on and then his hair and getting makeup. There's a um, one of the uh, makeup artists played a Borg in season um two of Picard season one or two of Picard I think it was two um two is, yeah yeah and uh and so there's a uh, picture of him in Borg makeup making up a Borg 
Uh, it was, <laughs> it's so meta. Um, it's great. Uh, it's so much fun. So, um, so I recommend you read our review and, and, uh, um, and pick up a copy because it is a gorgeous book. Do you, you guys have any interest? Are, are either of you going to pick that up? Maybe I, the, the, the art and making of anything like art and making of blank, like books are my favorite. I love them. I I have the one for the Lord of the Rings. I have one for Star Wars. Um, and they're, they're so good. And they're like, I like put them on my table and I'm like, whenever I'm like, man, I want to procrastinate. I'll like flip through them. It's perfect. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And that makes sense because you are a uh, theater person. You're, you're. <laughs> doing all that art and and making of stuff and i'm the same way i'm i'm a stage manager so i i love the behind the scenes stuff how about you chris yeah i like i like that behind the scenes kind of stuff too uh you know i uh i i've never i've never professionally worked in in production but i'm always fascinated with the way things are done um uh, you know one of my other projects is uh uh involves uh zombie films and uh you know I, i'm always fascinated with the makeup process that goes into you know creating movie zombies and so um but uh but the picard art uh the art design of the picard series was really really good i yeah. thought um and and uh i liked a lot of what they were doing especially with with the ship designs and 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 those sorts of things and so um i don't know that i'll buy it but uh if i'm at a bookstore i will certainly uh uh certainly take a look at it yeah 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 uh and what is plug plug your zombie project uh, oh it, it's about. okay it's uh, uh it's called zombie apocalypse monthly and um uh, so uh yeah uh and so it uh it it uh I, it's been inactive for a little while i got busy this semester with uh with teaching and i haven't really gotten back to it but uh i cover um zombie pop culture zombie films zombie books zombie television uh and also uh some uh practical stuff for disaster preparedness uh you know if uh if you're prepared for a zombie apocalypse you're prepared for a fire or a tornado or a hurricane or whatever natural disaster happens to be in your geographic location so uh so uh do you like equipment reviews and and that kind of stuff but the the the, the gist of it is is the zombie pop culture uh and so i started it back in 2012 um so um, so it's been going for a little while now. Um, we uh, this summer we passed over a thousand articles published. Wow! So, uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's it's got some content there. So yeah. if if we wanted to have our brains eaten, uh, where would we find uh, your zombie apocalypse web website? Oh, it's uh, zamonthly dot com. Now that our brains have been eaten, um, I just want to wrap up uh, by saying. Uh, thank you to all our Patreon supporters. Um, this uh, We really appreciate what you're doing um, for us and how you're helping us uh, keep going. Uh, we have fees to pay, which seem to keep going up. We've, we have hosting fees. Um, we have all kinds of things. Um, I know I say this every week, but we are working on merch for the Patreon. So um, I, I was uh, reviewing some designs just today. So, um, or I guess that was yesterday. I, the days are blending together. But anyway, thank you, Patreons. Uh, if you are not a Patreon member, uh, please consider signing up. Even a dollar a month will help us out. Uh, you'll get this video and all our videos two days early. Um, and uh, also um, special features like deleted clips, which I think we are going to have at least two, maybe three from today. <laughs> Uh, we went on a few tangents, I have to say. Um, so watch for those throughout the week. Um, and uh, and and just come support us. You can, as I say, do as little as a dollar a month. Uh, you can do more. You can do a one-time donation. You can do, um, you know, an annual donation or a monthly donation. There are so, so many options right now to do that. Um, you'll also become part of our Discord server. Um, where we pop in from time to time to chat. Um, and and so all our DSTN friends can uh, can hop in there and, and chat with us. Um, 
So it really, really makes a difference. And I know you're thinking, well, I can't afford, I can't afford very much. Um, it, it doesn't matter whatever you can afford. And if you can't afford, uh, I totally understand that position. I work in theater. So, um, you, uh, just pass this on to other people, you know, get other people involved if you can. Um, you know, just, just, you know, spread the word about daily Star Trek news. Um, and we would really, really, really appreciate it. And thank you so much for, for joining us on this ride. Uh, Chris Post, Aster Lufkin, thank you once more for joining me for Daily Star Trek News Roundup. Uh, let's do this again next week. Absolutely. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm.